Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 91 day 3091 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition third edition day 91 we are on page number 299 and today we'll cover the topic of set theory set theory and Venn diagrams let's begin shall we with a very simple question very straightforward question what exactly is a set a set a set is simply is simply a list, a list or a collection, collection of items. It could be items, it could be objects, it could be people, it could be numbers. It can be anything, it's a list, it's a collection of items that share, that share a common characteristic. They, they have to have something in common. They share a common char characteristic, a common, uh, common quality. For example, for example, we might have a set, set of, set of all the cars that Mike owns. We're going to make a list of set of all cars that Mike owns. So it's a list. And here's the set. Honda and Ford. And that's the end of it. He only owns two cars. A Honda and a Ford. That's it. This set has only two members. It has two members. Here's another example. Set of people. Set of people who are coming, who are coming to dinner tonight. Again, it's a list of people. That's not a list of objects, but it's a list of people. And we're going to list all the people who are coming to dinner tonight. Three people are coming to dinner tonight. Albert, Betty, and Catherine. Three people are coming to dinner tonight, Albert, Betty and Catherine. There you go. This set has three members. Here's another example. Set of, set of, set of prime numbers. Set of prime numbers. This set contains two, three, five, seven, eleven, and so on and so forth. So the first, first set that we had has two members. These are called members or elements. Members or elements. The objects of a set are called, so this was the first thing, the objects of a set are called members or elements. How many elements did first set have? Let's call it set A. Set A had two elements, two members. Set B had three elements, three members. They are referred to as elements even if they are people. Here we have Albert, Batty and Catherine. It has three elements. This set, this set consists of three members. What about the third one? What about this set? This set never ends. It has infinite number of elements. It has infinite number of elements. Such a set is called an infinite set. Because, because by its very nature, it is impossible to list all its members. It goes on forever. Whereas 
some, a set that contains a fixed number of elements or members is called these two are these two are finite sets finite sets with limited number of elements or members infinite set which goes on forever let's carry on this is a very basic concept that you have to know for the GRE it doesn't test on the GRE they do not test you very complicated concept about set theory very basic very elementary concept things that you already probably know this is just to refresh your memory just so you understand that these are the things that you will come across let's move on so I made a list of how many items we're going to talk about and I don't know how I went to Oh, so infinite set and finite set, the concept of infinite set and finite set is what I'm referring to as item number three. The first item was set is a, set is a list, a collection of items or people's number. Second, second thing we learned was the objects in the set are called elements or members. And the third thing we learned is that some sets are finite and some sets are infinite. Number four. Number four. Point number four. I want to maintain the same numbering system that I don't miss anything in my notes. What is a null set? What is a null set? What is a null set? A null set is an empty set. A null set is an empty set. It has no members. It has no members. It has no members. It's an empty set. For example, for example, if you want to make a set, say for example, set of all the people who have been to planet Mars. Set of all the people who have been to planet Mars, well we humans have not been able to go to planet Mars as of today. It is an empty set. This set would look like this. Just an empty set. Just like that. So if you call this set, uh, we had ABC, let's call it set D. Set D would simply be an empty set. It is simply an empty set. You can write it like this or, or we can represent it with a symbol Greek letter Phi which stands for empty set. Do you understand? An empty set is represented by the 21st letter of the Greek alphabet Phi is pronounced Phi, P-H-E Phi either this way or that way but don't put that inside that because that will mean that this symbol is actually one member of that set. Do you understand? Let's move on when we're talking about set, when we're talking about set, repetitions are not counted. Repetitions, let me pay attention to my handwriting. Are not counted as additional elements. For example, let's continue this thing on the top here. Here is a set we're going to have. Set A. Set A consists of one, one, two, two, three, three, three and four. If somebody asks us, if somebody asks us how many elements does this set have, how many members does this set have, this is how they're going to ask. First of all, let's understand how they're going to ask the question. This is how the question is asked. You put these two lines and you put the name of the set in the middle. It's not a bracket because brackets only come in three different forms like this or like that or like that. It's neither. It's not a bracket. It's, I don't know what it's called. I'm sure it has a name. It slips in my mind, but you just put two lines like this straight and you put the name of the letter, uh, name of the set inside it. 
And that means, this, this means, this is a question, it means how many, how many members, or if you like, elements, does set A have? That's what it's asking. How many elements, how many members does this set have? What's the answer? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, it does not have seven elements. As we just said, repetitions are not counted as additional elements. Unique, unique members are counted. One, two, three, and four. It has four elements. It, this set has four elements. So if you have a set where one appears 50,000 times, well, if it's just one appearing 50,000 times, that set only has one element. One element. Do you understand? Let's look at another one. How about this set right here? Set B. We're just going to make something up. Set B. 7.4. Doesn't really matter what we put down. Pi. Uh, 3 tenth. And I'll just put down anything else. 37th over 49. How many members does set have? This does this set have? How, how are we going to ask the question? Like this. B with two lines around it and it has five unique things one two three four five this is letter pi the, the pi uh, as in the numerical value it has five members five members how about how about a question like this see if you can answer this question here's a tricky question how about this what's the answer to this question what is this thing asking what is it asking? It's asking, remember this letter, Greek letter phi, means empty set. It is asking how many, how many elements or members does, does an empty set have? Well, if it's empty set, if it's empty, it's empty. It's, there's nothing in it. Therefore, the answer to this question simply would be answer to this question simply would be a null set has zero elements has zero elements I was going to write it like this but I stopped myself because when I write zero if you, if you have noticed it before in my work I have a habit of putting a line across it so I didn't want to confuse you that's not what we're talking about here zero a null set has how many elements? It has zero elements. It has no elements because it's a null set, it's an empty set, it has nothing in it. Do you understand? Let's move on. What does this mean? What does this symbol mean? Set A is a set, B is a set, and this thing means A Union B. A. Union B. What is A union B equal to? A union B equals to, if somebody asks us how many elements, how many elements does two sets combined have when we put the elements of A and elements of B together, how many members does it have? That's what it's asking. How many members does the element, does set A and set B have together? And the answer is, the combined set will have how are many how, how are many elements that we had in set A, plus of course how are many elements we had in set B, minus anything that they had in common. Anything that they had in common. This when you have upside down U here, this is read as A. Intersection B. This is how it's read. This is how we read it. A intersection B. A intersection B. For example, for example, here's set A. Set A is made up of 5, 10, and 15. It has three elements, as we can see. Here's set B. Set B is made up of 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. So, 
how many how many members does set A have? It has three. One, two, three. Set A has three elements. How many members does set B have? How many elements does set B have? It has one, two, three, four, five. five. There are five because they're all unique. There is no repetition. It's five. But when we put them together, A union B does not equal eight. A union B does not simply equal how many elements that were in A plus how many members that were in B. It doesn't equal that. You have to account for the fact if there is anything common. And here they do have something in common. There is one element that appears in both. 15. We cannot count it twice. We cannot count it twice. We cannot count it once as an element of set A and then again as an element of set B. We have to we have to prevent the double counting is what is known as double counting here. So what's the correct answer? This is not the correct answer. What's the correct answer? What well, correct answer is right here in front of us? This is the correct answer. So the correct answer would be how many members does set A have? Set A has three members. How many members does set B have? It has one, two, three, four, five. It has five members. And finally, do they have anything in common? Do they have anything in common? A intersection B means do they have the set A and set B have anything in common? The answer of course is 15 right here. So it has one member that is common. So we need to subtract whatever however many elements that are common. One element that's common. We subtract one because that one, this 15, was counted twice. So we count it twice first as an element of A, then we count it again as an element of B, uh, and then because we count one thing as two times, we have to take away one to negate the fact that we counted it twice. Do you understand? And that's all it is. That's all it is. There is a name for it. What we just have here, what we just did here, it has a name. It has a very fancy name. Don't get intimidated, don't get intimidated by the name, but you have to understand what it means in case you come across in the exam. This is what is known as, this is, what is known as known, not known. This is what is known as inclusion exclusion principle inclusion exclusion principle like i said don't get intimidated by the fancy name it doesn't really mean much it simply simply it simply tells you not to count something twice it, it if it appears in both the sets and you will find this thing that we just talked about on page 300 on page 300 in the middle of the page actually i'm going to show you exactly so that you understand where exactly to find it i'm going to hold up the book in front of you here and show you exactly where it is on page 300 so here i'm holding the page 300 right here there is a diagram here, don't worry about that right now, right here in the middle of the page where they talk about inclusion exclusion principle, which is what we just did here on page 300. It sounds very fancy, but it's not. It simply means you can't count something twice. You cannot count something twice. Finally, let's very quickly talk about the second, second concept here, the Venn diagram. We're going to show this work that we did here in a Venn diagram. We need room, we need to, we need to raise something. Let's raise this part, we already have this thing, let's raise this side so we can... Let's do it here. Here's set A. Set A has three members, 5, 10 and 15. 5, 10 and 15. And here is set B. Set B has 3, 6, 9, 12 and 15. 3, 6, 9, 12 and 15. And how do we know that they have something in how do we know that these two have these two sets have something in common? Well the way we know that these two sets have something in common is the way that it was drawn. They're overlapping. These two are overlapping. If they had nothing in common, they would be disjointed. They would be separate. They will not touch each other, they will not be overlapping, they would be what is known as disjointed. These sets are overlapping. Since they're overlapping, they must have something in common. Is there anything in common? Of course there is something in common. We just talked about 15 right here. It appears here and it appears here. It's common. So since it's common, we need to put it in the middle and get rid of it from here and here. And that's all. And that's how we show it 
in Venn diagram. Very simple, very elementary concept of Venn diagram. Let's, let's do a question. Let's do a problem now. Let's do a problem. Here's the question. 1200 students we are told. 1200 students we are told. 1200 students. Took a quiz. We are told the 1200 students took a quiz, which was based on, based on, just two questions. A very simple quiz the teacher gave, which consisted of only two quiz, uh, two questions. It turned out that 65 percent, 65 percent answered. 65 percent of the students of the 1,200 students who took the exam answered first question correctly. Before that, told that 40 percent answered. Second question correctly. And before the tool, the 30% answered neither. Neither correctly. In other words, 30% of the students got both of these questions wrong. I'm going to raise this thing. We, we, we need the room and it's coming in the way. Question is how many how many answered only two correctly? How many answered only two correctly? That's where we have to pay attention because notice how it's phrased. It says 65% answered first question correctly. It does not say 65% of the question answered only the first question. It doesn't say 65% answered only the first question correctly. It doesn't have the word only in it. It doesn't have that. It just says 65% answered first question correctly. 40% answered second question correctly. It goes on to say that 30% managed to answer neither question correctly. And then it goes on to tell us that 30% answered neither correctly. Well, if 30% answered neither correctly, if 30% answered neither correctly, then here's the solution. 30% Oh, we can start from here instead of rewriting everything. So the question is how many answered? So we are, we are working with this thing. If 30% answered neither correctly, that implies that 70% must have must have answered either one or two or both correctly. Either one or two or both correctly. 70% of the student must have answered either question number one correctly or question number two correctly or both of them correctly. And this is how we present it in Venn diagram. This box outside is called the universal set. Universal set. It is called the universal set because it represents all the possibilities. And 30 is going to go in this corner here because they do not belong, they do not belong to either of the set that we're going to draw here. Set people who answered first question correctly and the people who answered second question correctly. Well, these people answered neither first nor second correctly. They go outside because everything has to add up to 100. Now, another thing that we're going to do here is that this is very important. Even though the question says 1,200 students, if the question says 1,200 students or 850 students or 740 students, don't deal with the number that they give you. First, solve the problem strictly in terms of percentages. When you have your answer at the end in terms of percentages, and then simply find out how, what does it translate to into numbers based on that percentage, instead of carrying out the numbers everywhere. Do you understand? So we're going to solve this entire problem in terms of percentages, as we did here, all of this thing. 
So 70% men still answered either one or two correctly, which means 30% answered neither correctly. It goes outside. We also know that 65% answered the first question correctly. And 40% answered the second question correctly. Which what happens? The way it's drawn so far is not correct because if you add up 65 and 40, 65 and 40, we get 105. But we know that only 70%, only 70%. Right here, only 70% of the people manage to answer either one or two or both correctly. This adds up 65 and 40 adds up to 105, but only 70% answered either one or two or both correctly. Where is this where is this 35 coming from? That 35 is the number of people that are being double counted. 35 people are being double counted. Why are they being double counted? Because those are the people who answered both of them correctly. And therefore we are counting them twice. And because we are counting them twice, our total is 35 more than it should have been. This total should have been 70 because if 30 people did not answer either of this question correctly, then 70% must have answered either one or two or both correctly. Not 105 obviously. How can you have 105%? 35% must have been counted twice. Where does it belong? These 35 people these 35 people belong as a member of set 1, people who answered first question correctly, and the same 35 people also belong as a member of set 2, because they also answered question number 2 correctly. They answered, these 35 people answered both of these questions correctly. They belong right in the middle. Now, as soon as we put that 35 in the middle, now we have to go back and adjust our figure. This 35 was included in this 65. We have taken those 35 out of here, put them here, 35 35, 65 minus 35 is 30. 30% 30 of the people answered only question number 1 correctly. And since 35 is here, this has to be adjusted to 5. Now we can answer our question. What was the question asking? question was asking, how many people answered only question number 2 correctly? How many answered only 2 correctly? How many? answered only only two correctly well we know the answer is five percent five percent of the people five percent of the 1200 well we know ten percent of 1200 we know ten percent of 1200 is 120 therefore five percent would be 60 well 60 people managed to answer 60 people were the one who answered only question number 2 correctly. 30% answered question number 1 correctly only. They answered only question number 1 correctly and we can answer that too. How many answered question number 1 correctly only? We can very quickly answer that as well. How many answered only 2 correctly? from the Venn diagram you can see here is 30 percent because remember remember we solved our problem in terms of percentages 30 percent of 1200 we know we know 10 percent of 1200 10 percent of 1200 is 120 well if 10 percent of 1200 is 120 30 percent must be three times as much 360 360 people answered only question number one correctly do you understand and that's all it is that's all it is. Let's do one more. One more very similar to it, very quickly, and this time we're not going to explain that much, we're just going to simply set it up. You pause the video, you solve it yourself and answer the question. Do you understand? Here we go. Today is our lesson number 91. Today, 91, and then four more days, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. Those five videos are going to be based on set theory and Venn diagram, and in those five videos we're going to solve 10 problems. Two problems per day, 91 through 95. So we have to do the second one. Otherwise, we're going to fall behind. Just, again, this is very straightforward, very simple. You do it yourself, okay? It says we have 400 students that we surveyed. 400 students were surveyed. 75% said they study French. 55% said they study Spanish and 20% said 
They study. They study neither French nor Spanish. So here are the questions. How many study? How many study? Both or only French or only Spanish? Three questions. We can do it very quickly. I want you to pause the video. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Pause the video, do it yourself, and then we'll do it together very quickly because we just did the first one very slowly. We're not going to do this, this one also at that same speed. We know how to do it now. Okay, here we go. So first of all, 20 are studying neither. So here's our universal set. Again, we're going to do it in percentages first before we worry about how many. Do you understand? 20 are studying neither. It goes, it goes outside. Which means it's only the 80% of the students who are studying either French or Spanish or perhaps both. Only 80%. Remember that. Keep that in mind. But we many, when we add up these two figures, 75 and 55, we get 0, carry 1, that's 130. But we know only 80%, only 80% are studying French or Spanish or both. Only 80%. We know that because 20% are studying neither. If we subtract 130 from 50, 130 from 80, we get 50. Where is this 50 coming from? This 50 is are the number of people who are being counted twice, just as before. Just as before, they are counted twice. They are double counted. These 50 people are being. Well, I said 50 people, but you understand this is 50 percent because we are solving in terms of percentage. Half the people that we surveyed, 50 percent of the people are being double counted. They are being double counted because they are studying both languages. First, they are counted as students of French. Then the same 50 percent of people of the 1,200, or rather 400, are counted again the 200 people, as the people who are studying Spanish. We're counting them twice. We can't have that. Here's the people who are studying French. Here are the people who are studying Spanish. And we know 75% are studying French. We know 55% are studying Spanish. But, but we just established that the 50% are studying both. This is the percentage. 50%. This 50 represents the number of people who are being double counted, since we are doing in percentages, is 50%. 50% are being double counted. They are being double counted because they are studying both. We put that 50 in the middle, because those 50 people are members, those 50 people are members of both set A, I'm calling them I'm calling this set A and this set B, or set F and set S if you like. They counted first as the members of set F. Well, they're already here. So we need to subtract that 50 from here because they're not 75. Now it's 25. So 25% of the people are studying only French. There is your answer. How many, how many people are studying French? The answer is how many are studying only French? We just found it, 25%. How many people? are studying only Spanish, well, out of this 55, out of this 55 percent, 50 percent are also studying French. We are double counting, so we need to subtract 50 from here, we get 5. How many are studying only Spanish? The answer is only 5 percent. And how many are studying both? How many are studying both? The answer is 50 percent, right here, the union. There we go. Now, if you wanted the numbers, if you want any numbers, it's very simple. It's 400, it's very simple. Both is 50%, half of, half, of, half of 400 is 200. If half is 200, 25 must, must be 100. And if 50% is 200, 5% must be one tenth of that, which is 20. Which makes sense, because 10% of, of 400 is 40. If 10% is 40, 5% must be 20. Or if 50% is 200, 5%, which is tenth of that, must be 20. And that's what it is. And that's what it is. And when we add them up, they better add up to 400. They better add up to 400. Because there is a fourth category, which is neither. 
when we add them all up, we're going to do it here very quickly. They have to add up to 400, otherwise there is something wrong. So both, how many are studying both? We just said 200. How many are studying, how many are studying only French? We said 100. How many are studying only Spanish? We said 20. But that only adds up to 320. We have 400 people, where are the missing 80 people? Well, we also know that 20% are studying neither. 20% are studying neither. What is 20% of 400? Well, 10% of 400 is 40, 20% must be 80. They have to add up to 400 because that's the total number of people we had surveyed. So it has to add up. Do you understand? These questions that we're going to do, 10 of them, as I said before, they're going to get progressively a little bit more difficult. We start out with something very elementary, but as we, as we get to, uh, uh, think of this as a scale of 1 to 10, as we get higher up, uh, we're going to do 10 of them only, they're going to get a little bit more uh, challenging, a little bit more difficult. If something like this appears in the exam, it'll appear as simply as an easy question. Then we'll do the ones that will qualify as medium question and finally the hard ones. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.